Good afternoon, President Whiting, Principal Levesque, Sister Angela, Sister Mercedes, Ursuline faculty and trustees, graduating Ursuline seniors, parents, and honored guests. I want to express my thanks to Mrs. Levesque and to the members of the Ursuline faculty for their kind invitation to speak today. I'm truly honored by this request, but I still approach this task with trepidation. Although many years have passed since my own high school graduation, I feel that I too am still in the process of learning and growing. Nevertheless, I am very happy to have this chance to relate my gratitude for the education I received at Ursuline Academy. And I am extremely pleased to share this very joyous occasion with all of you. I still remember my Ursuline graduation, and so many of the beautiful details are unchanged. Like yours, our celebration began on the previous evening with a mass of thanksgiving. How appropriate that a sacrament serves as the prime mover for this event, as indeed all life at Ursuline springs from the desire to give God glory. Yesterday, arriving earlier in your graduation sequence due to the rain, was the happy gathering for the class picture. What layered memories of prior assemblies you young women of the class of 2016 brought as you came together, and in what is said, the lush green pasture framed by the trees, pond, and rhododendrons. The procession that followed recreated the original assembly of your class years earlier as each individual student moved forward with measured step to join her classmates. I can assure you seniors that this was a moment you will never forget. The beautiful white clad procession down the steps to greet your parents, families, and friends. I found this moment to be filled with symbolism, and it appears even more strongly to me now. The style of the graceful stairway gives faint echoes of Rome and Italy and the seat of our faith. The procession from the convent to the crowd is a symbol of the Ursuline Order's gift of education to the students, their families, and the church as a whole. And even the white gowns and roses serve as symbols. They embody and reflect the beauty and youth that find such happy expression in every young woman here. Reviewing these powerful memories during the past few days, I realized that the careful planning and attention to detail manifested in this graduation ceremony are true reflections of the educational journey you have undergone during your years at Ursuline Academy. There is a beautiful orderliness about the curriculum that is exemplified in the balanced regimen of classical tradition. You have been taught ways of gaining knowledge that will provide a solid basis for your future pursuits of academic excellence and spiritual development. The loving example of your teachers has instilled sincere confidence that any worthwhile goal can be reached through hard work and prayer. Now that I'm a parent myself, I want to say a special word of thanks to the parents and all of those who have supported these students through the years at Ursuline. You deserve credit today as well. You have stood alongside these wonderful young women as they triumphed in the classroom, on the stage, in athletic competition, through artistic accomplishments, concerts, service programs, and in the innumerable activities that define the Ursuline community. You have shared with them in the ups and downs of young women, holding them close on days filled with incredible joy, and holding them even closer on days of tear-filled sadness. 
It is a blessing to live life with such intensity. You have made an enormous commitment and invested so much of your lives to give these young women an extraordinary experience. I know how grateful your daughters are for the opportunities they have had in their school. My two sisters are also first line graduates. Our education set us on a path of service, particularly to children. Two of us work in pediatric medicine, one in legal aid for juveniles, and contributed to lives enriched by a scholarly and Catholic commitment that has continued for each of us into the next generation. To this day, we recognize that our Ursuline education was one of the greatest gifts from our parents. And we know the tremendous sense of fulfillment that our father and mother realized in being able to provide to us this wonderful school and experience. Well, commencement is a celebration of the long arc of continuity at Ursuline, it must also be said that much has changed since I graduated here at Ursuline and everywhere in our lives. Indeed, it is transformation more than continuity that will characterize so much of your experience in the years ahead. I would like to share with you some observations about these changes and then three thoughts on transformation in the world that you will encounter. Over the past decade, Ursuline Academy has been undergoing a transformation. It has been enriched by lay leaders and stewardship, created new classes and a new schedule, welcomed new teachers, and broken ground on a new athletic and convocation center. As a board member for the past nine years, I have watched these changes with great pride, knowing that Ursuline was preparing itself for a new future. My profession of medicine has undergone a transformation as well. New treatments have revolutionized the outcomes for the children with pulmonary hypertension that I care for, creating possibilities of long-term survival that were unheard of just 20 years ago. Our understanding of disease has been completely changed by discoveries obtained through sequencing the human genome. We have revised the way we teach medicine to medical students and residents in training. And, as been widely documented, the organization of medical care, its documentation in electronic health records, and the way that health care coverage is provided have all been turned upside down. But so far, Ursuline Academy and Boston Children's Hospital are recognizable places. Other changes have been more remarkable. In college, I wrote my thesis on a typewriter, called home on a telephone which was linked to a cord, and while I occasionally snapped and often chatted, I never imagined Snapchat. <laughs> Uber is a German vocabulary. A tweet came from a nest. An app was a form I submitted to medical school. If you wanted to look something up, you went to the library. Googling, who knows what that meant? <laughs> it wasn't a word. Hogwarts was, well, words on a pig. There weren't so many choices. In examples big and small, the way we communicate, travel, work, live, play, study, read, investigate, and learn have changed completely. And I don't mind sharing this with you. I'm not that old. <laughs> it all happened so quickly. And the pace of that change is accelerating. The Greek philosopher Heraclitus famously wrote that the only constant is change, and that one cannot step twice in the same river. Now, however, change isn't a constant. It is an exponential barrier going faster and faster. And you don't step into the river so much as don your virtual reality glasses and shazam. You are waiting in the Ganges, or the Nile, or the Thames, or the Amazon. So my first observation is this. 
You are the heirs to all this change, and your lives will be filled with transformation. With these changes come incredible opportunities. There are more educational and career possibilities for you than ever before. These opportunities are hard-fought victories, and some successes will not come easily. In the words of Sheryl Sandberg, leaning in is your work, but this is the starting point. Also important is hanging on and using all of your strength and courage and faith to make sure that you will accomplish your goals. But even as you rely on pithy quotes and good friends and loving families to support you, you will be inundated by change. It will be relentless and disturbing, disruptive and exhilarating. Transformation and change will be daily parts of your lives, not just through a new app on the iPhone, but in asking questions about who you are and what is important to you. So, how will you manage and cope with and savor and enjoy all of these new things? This is where your Ursuline education will direct you. You have been given the skills, and more importantly, the values, to navigate a vast and ever-changing world. In an era of relying on GPS to drive around the corner, you have your own internal compass in all that you have learned here. <coughs> like the Ursuline shield with a constellation that points to the North Star, it will guide you steadfast and ably. The Ursuline tradition and the example of St. Angela has honed your identity and sense of spirituality. <coughs> You have been encouraged to share your light with the world, to value academic achievement, to be a loyal friend, to be a good sport, to have reverence for God and all creation, to participate in a community of caring people, and perhaps most importantly, to live the motto of Servion, I will serve. I promise you that no matter how fast the world spins, and no matter what the new, next new thing proves to be, these values given to you by your family, by your faith, by Ursuline Academy, will be a constant. They will be with you always. They are the antidote to fast and superficial newness that will allow you to grow and learn, to thrive as a person, to contribute, and to share your life with people you love and who love you. But change is not just something that you are prepared to handle, like waiting for a snowstorm with a shovel at your side. In your life, change is not like the weather, something everyone talks about, but no one does anything about. And this is my final point about change and transformation. Urshline has prepared you to be the agent of change, to be a young woman who transforms the world. You are set to be active and engaged, not simply open to new ideas, but creating them and sharing them. For Urshline has taught you to listen to your heart. That is a difficult thing to do in our times. There is so much noise and distraction. People often say that they cannot hear themselves think or that they are multitasking to the point of juggling too many things at once. Listening to your heart is no easy task. Society does not always reward it. During medical training, I spent years learning how to use a stethoscope so I could listen to the hearts of others. Using a stethoscope, auscultation, is an art in medicine. And cardiologists take pride in using our stethoscopes, like a wizard uses a wand. We can hear the past and sometimes see the future as we listen through the stethoscope. But for you, the key task is to learn to listen to your own heart. You need to turn the stethoscope upon yourself. When you do that, you will realize that Ursuline has given you not just the strength to stand up to the shockwaves of the future, but also the courage and the heart to make those waves. 
You are the person who will comfort and advocate for those who need help. You have the skills to be the peacemaker, to hunger for righteousness, and to make justice happen. You can innovate, designing services and products and organizations that will define the future. Change isn't just something that happens to Ursuline graduates. Change is what Ursuline graduates are called to do. Transformations that are driven by the heart and reflect the values and imagination which you have developed during your years at Ursuline are treasures that you will take with you on every step of your journey. Before closing, I want to address you about some of the future challenges you will face as young women. You have at your fingertips a vast array of possibilities for personal fulfillment, education, and employment. With these opportunities, you are called in new ways to share your abilities with your community, the church, and the world. You are gifted and capable, and I encourage you to revel in the chances that you will have to pursue your passions. Transformations bring with them new challenges. Our society is only catching up to the realities for women who are simultaneously mothers and daughters, sisters and colleagues, teammates and leaders. I urge you never to allow any obstacles to be a source of discouragement. Strive instead to use your vast creativity to develop new solutions that can be a benefit to you and to generations of women. As I look at this assembly of beautiful, courageous, and talented women, I am reassured that the future is in good hands. In stating my wish for you, Ursuline, class of 2016, I can do no better than to relate the words of Mary Noel's sister, Ada Ford, which she wrote in a letter to her niece shortly before her death in El Salvador 45 years ago. I hope you come to find that which gives life a deep meaning for you, something to live for, maybe even to die for, something that energizes you, enthuses you, enables you to keep moving ahead. I can't tell you what it might be that's for you to find, to choose, to love. I can just encourage you to start looking and support you in the search. Thank you. Congratulations to the Ursuline class of 2016. Go and transform our world. And may God bless you all.